Good evening from Big Cedar Farm. Just coming out to check the sheep. We put them in this new grazing paddock here yesterday. Plenty of space. We're kind of <laughs> doing a low intensity grazing right now, moving twice a week. Just coming to check in on them, see how they're growing. We'll see if he touches. He got real close. So this fence here, we're running about 3,000 to 3,500 volts in it at the moment. With small ruminants, especially sheep, you would prefer it to be up around uh, 5,000 volts just because they're not, not as heavy as the cow, so they don't have as so much ground contact with their feet. And so you need a little, a little more voltage to make sure you shock them well. However, they are, um, they'll stay in just fine to three, with 3,000 volts. So we're not feeding um, grain or anything at the moment, no supplements. Uh, they are getting a mineral and um, salt, some Kansas salt. And so that's all they're getting at the moment. And I, they've, they've been responding well. You know, they're growing very nicely. We had them up in a the crowd for a couple days. We had some bad storms, so you can see they're rather dirty from being up around the the dirt. Had a little bit of mud up there. But they're going to clean up very nicely here in this tall grass. Basically, they'll be taking a, a bath. What I did with the fence here, uh, because it was so tall, I mean, this is a lot of our, um, a lot of our spring forages, a lot of our... Uh, Forbes here. I mean, they've gone into reproductive stage, so they're not they're not the most nutritional value at the moment. But but uh, I want to make sure it got up in height. I try to avoid some parasites I feared maybe in this area. So that's what I did. And you'll see, I actually took our lawnmower because it's a little wetter. I didn't want to bring our tractor and brush hog down here. I actually brought our lawnmower and I mowed off a path all the way around where our fence is. And then that'll just help get a little better uh, you know voltage running through our fence keep it cleaner if not the power will will be drugged down by by the forge we have as you can see you know the forge is pretty tall i guess i can swing over to this side you know this is what i mowed but the forge itself is pretty t i mean it's mature you could you could bail it for hay for sure but this is what we have going on. And so as soon as I feel that they've done an adequate job here, kind of picking what's best nutritionally for them, I'm going to shift over into this area. They've not touched it at all this year. And so they'll be in this little section here. You know, gosh, probably four days. I'll move them after four days just for parasites. If I wasn't worried about parasites at all, there would be enough there for probably 12 days or so but i'll do um i'll probably chop it up a little smaller um sections graze them in four uh, for three to four days boom through another section try to utilize all i can this is a lot of spring forage here clean it up and then i'll do what i will be doing here is i'm going to come through with a brush hog and clean everything else up allow for the warm season forages to come on uh, we have bermuda and just a lot, we have a lot of Forbes down in this area, so I just kind of want to do a cleanup and allow any of our warm seasons to come up through the area. So that that's our plan. So you've had this introduction, in another one, but this is our six-year-old you. She's the only one that we can just outright pet. Very very sweet. We brought her on. A few weeks ago, she has two babies. This is one of her babies here. Uh, very nice. It's her Yuling. And she has a, a brother. He is right up, up there. He tucked behind. He's right, let me see, right there. That's the brother. But we, we are loving our white dorpers. They're growing out very nice. Uh, in comparison to the Katahdins that we had before. I I'm not going to say Katahdins in general, but I would say the bloodline, the bloodstream of Katahdins that we did have, uh, they required a little more maintenance. And so far, you know, with these Dorpers, they're just growing like a weed. We love them. 
uh, low maintenance, uh, good fertility from what we've seen in our first experience with lambing this year. And you know, we lambed unassisted, lambing. And so overall, just, you know, fantastic. We're really happy with everything. Uh, one of our first time mothers, I guess she had good condition, a little good breeding. And, uh, you know, we had twins out of our first year with her. And so we we're very, very pleased with everything. And they're just a calm group in comparison to the the um, Katahdin and Katahdin cross flock that we ran in the past. So I was really excited to get them into this tall grass area, not only for forage quality sake, but also um, to give them a bath there. They're a little, looking a little dirty, a little rank. Uh, we did do a deworming on the ewes last week just to be safe. That's one reason we had them up in the corral area. Uh, we did deworming on them just to be safe. We're, we gave them uh, vitamin Bs. We did give them all, or the adult use a cobalt a bolus to provide vitamin B. Um, this gentleman, Coco, he would not swallow cobalt. And so I had to figure out him, do something with him. But I know they all need vitamin B. They need to be shedding off this winter coat a little better. Uh, we're changing up our mineral program a little bit, and hopefully that will encourage them. But like I said, overall, happy, happy with what we have here. It's always neat to come out and just observe what what they're eating, what they're choosing to eat. You know, some of them are going for grasses, others are going for broadleaf forbs. There's just a variety, and it's always it's really cool. But we'll keep them in here for another two days, then I'll move them on over to their new new paddock area. With that, I'll go ahead and sign off. Again, this is Matthew with Big Cedar Farm. We're located in central Arkansas, and we are focusing on white dorper sheep now. And, of course, we have poultry, we have ducks, and laying hens, so we do egg cells and egg production in the area so we also have a sawmill and we're making videos of those you will see a few more of those videos coming up soon of all that progress so with that we're going to sign off here hope you'll have a blessed evening and we will catch you next time